what kind of person does she look like? She's a doctor, right. This is a medical example. And I'm going to give you some statistics and probabilities that are exactly as a doctor would receive it and as the doctor would also give to you. So I'm just going to put everything in the context of that kind of warning, all right? So let me give you a scenario. Let's suppose that your doctor has said to you, hey, um, I think you are at risk of this very particular disease. It's quite rare. It's quite rare, it only affects 0.1% of the population, but there's this variety of things in your, you know, symptoms or whatever. I think you might have this. Let's put you in for a test, okay? And she says, this test is 95% accurate. Would you rate that as like good accuracy? Would you say that's pretty good? Yeah, I would too, right? So she says this is the test. This is the um, rate at which it affects the particular disease, affects the population. And then you get your test results back. Good morning, quickly, come in, take a seat, grab the door. Thank you. It needs to be shut properly. Cheers. All right. So you do the test, you make your review appointment, and she sits you down and says, hey, look, I've got bad news. You test positive. Right now, just be careful, right? Positive sounds like a good thing. Hooray. But of course, in the context of a disease test, what does positive mean? We, we think you have it. We think you've got it, right? You test positive on this test. What's the chance? What's the probability? that you actually have the disease. Because we agreed, like we think this is pretty accurate, right? But it's not 100%, it's not 100%. Now, this is in the field of what we're looking at at the moment, just before you ask a question, okay? Um, you might want to ask for some clarifying questions, like what does this mean, what does that mean? I'm deliberately leaving this just as vague as the doctor might hear it and might say it to you. So I'm, I'm, if you want to clarify some things, we'll get to that chance later. But I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to drop you right in the deep end and expect you to like do a calculation on your own. Good morning, take a seat quickly, please. I'll give you some options, okay? I'll give you some options. Let's do this multiple choice style, okay? Now in a second, I'm gonna ask you to vote on this and I'm not, uh, this is, you know, there's no, this is not a test, it doesn't matter, right? But I wanna see what your intuition is, okay? Here's the way I'm going to do the test. In about 30 seconds, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and you are going to put up one or two or three or four Fingers corresponding to answer A, answer B, answer C, answer D. Do you think there's a 100% chance you have the disease? Do you think there's a 95% chance you have the disease? And so on and so on. So these are the options. I'll just review for those of you who are just walking in. This is a particular disease, it's fairly rare. The test is this accurate, okay? Which do you think, one, two, three, or four, is the chance you have the disease. So I've just been talking all this time to stall for you and give you a bit of thinking time. Your thinking time is over now. Close your eyes, because I want you to uh, vote for this without the, uh, the influence of like, oh, she's really smart, I think I'm just gonna agree with her. Okay, so everyone close your eyes, I'm waiting for everyone, okay? And if you just walked in and you're just looking at this, okay, yes, it's all right, it's a very basic situation, okay? Okay, all eyes closed, we're almost there, we're almost there, okay. And I'd like you to, good morning, I'd like you to hold up one finger if you think the answer is A, 100%, two fingers if you think the answer is B, 95%, three fingers if you think the answer is C, 9.5%, and four fingers if you think the answer is D, which is 2%. So I'm looking for one, two, three, or four fingers. I'm gonna wait till everyone votes. Um, and hold it up nice and high, I just wanna see, like I wanna see clearly, okay? There's a couple of people who haven't voted just yet. Come and take a seat quickly, please. Okay, one, two, three, keep your eyes shut. I really want you to make sure. The options again, just to remind you, one finger for 100%, two fingers for 95%, three fingers for 9.5%, and then four fingers for 2%. Okay, so give the opportunity to change your mind, you're all happy. All right, now keep your hands up in the air with those hands there, and now I want you to open your eyes and have a look around you. Okay, keep your hands up straight so that other people can see what your vote was. Okay, so clearly it looks to me like option three seems to be dominating. Is the sense I'm getting? We got a few people in option B. Got some crazy, but yeah, okay. All right, are you ready to hear what the answer is? E, none of the above. Okay, you ready for the answer? You ready? The answer is... D, 2%. Now some of you are like, yes, it pays to be the hipster and take the non-mainstream option, okay? And others of you are like, how can that possibly be 
That doesn't look like it makes any sense whatsoever. Um, fun fact, right? When we are designing multiple choice questions for you, right? We design these things called distractors. Uh, that's literally what they're called. A distractor is uh, an answer which seems plausible or might flow out of a common mistake, but, but it, and it's close enough for you to think, I think it might be this one, um, which I successfully did for all of you, right? This looked like a pretty good option, right? It was a very successful distractor for all of you. But of course you're wondering, how actually can we argue that this might be true? Let me try and show you. Let's get back to the original statement. This particular disease, it affects 0.1% of the population. Part of why this is tricky, by the way, if you just walked in, please get your books out, you're here for maths, right? Part of the, way this is, the reason why this is tricky is because actually our brains are not well geared to think statistically in terms of percentages, right? So what I'm gonna try and do is put this, uh, you know, illustrate this in terms that might make this a little more sensible to you. 0.1% of the population. Let's suppose we had a thousand people, a thousand people, so take half the school, okay? If you had a thousand people, according to this statistic, how many of those people would you expect, of course it's not a guarantee, it's just probabilities, but how many people would you expect in that 1,000 to have, good morning, the disease? How many? Think about it. 1% uh, would be 1 in 100, wouldn't it? That's in fact literally what 1% means, 1 in 100. So 0.1% is not 1 in 100, it's 1 in 1,000. So in our 1,000 people, in our 1,000 people, this is 1,000 people, by the way. In this 1,000 people, you'd expect, statistically, probably, there should be exactly one person who has the disease. Let's call it this unfortunate guy, sorry, okay? So one in 1,000, here are the stats, right? This is what we expect. Now let's come back to the other idea. The test is 95% accurate. What does that mean for a test to be 95% accurate for these people? Now, if you're kind of wondering, you're like, oh, I think this question was unfair because like, I, I was totally tricked by that 9.5% or the 95% or whatever. You're actually partly correct because 95% accurate can actually mean a whole bunch of different things, okay? And it's kind of tricky to know what it means, but often we don't get told because it's quite complicated, right? Here's one simple example of what it could mean. A test is 95% accurate, okay? So if we had, you know, 100 people who have the disease, they actually, we know for sure, like we've tested, we can be very confident they've got the disease. Of those, 90, those 100 people, right, five of them are going to be told you're healthy, even though they have the disease. Does that make sense? Like for 5% of them, they're wrong. We give them what we call a false negative. We tell them they're healthy, even though they're sick, okay? But also, it goes the other way, doesn't it, right? You've got these 999 healthy people, and some of them are going to be told they have the disease, right? You were hoping you were in this situation, right? It's like, I hope I'm healthy and the test is positive, which was a mistake, right? So let me ask you this, right? Of these 1,000 people, 5% of them, despite being healthy, are going to be told they have the disease. How many people is that? 5%. What's 5%? No, 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 you don't need to calculate this. Think, think, these are easy numbers, right? 5% is 5 in 100, yeah, 5%. So in 1,000, it should be 50, right? There's 50 people. Okay, so now we know who's likely to have the disease, and we also know who's likely to test positive for the disease, which are two separate things. You test positive. That's what happened to you. So in this diagram, where are you? You test positive. We know this to be a fact. You are, hold on, you test positive, right? Most of these people are healthy, but inside this red box, despite being healthy, some of them have been told they have the disease, right? They've tested positive. So in other words, the people who test positive are inside the box. Does that make sense, right? What's the chance that you are this person when you know you're in the red box? Well, there's one chance you have the disease out of a sample space of 50. One in 50, what percentage is that? 2%. Do you see how counterintuitive probability and statistics can be? And this is not a, a manufactured situation. This is what people all around the world are told every single day by their doctors, and then they have to make an expectation. By the way, uh, when I showed you those answers before, right? These same, these same responses or same options were given to doctors, right? To try and say, if you were sitting with a patient, what would you actually tell them? Like, what's your chance of having the disease? And I don't want to scare you, but 
the doctors had a pretty similar representation of answers to this question than you did, right? Which should be shocking in one sense. You're like, oh my goodness, what are my doctors telling me? But it also should make a lot of sense because people who go into medicine are generally not people who have mathematics degrees or things like that, right? So it's counterintuitive. That's why it's so important we think about today's topic, which I'd love you to make a heading, is conditional probability.